No, I won't say happy birthday to you. You're divorced, which told me that you wanted to live life by yourself. Devoid of men, you wanted to be in your happiness, your singleness, and your solitude. Why would anybody be talking to you? It sounds like you were looking for attention and validation. Why even come on here for that? Most of the time I love being single. I am very comfortable being single, but tonight I hung out with friends and I had a great time. And then I was driving home and I started feeling this like wave of depression and anxiety. And I, I wasn't really sure what it was related to or where it was stemming from. And then I, I got home and I felt like so sad and lonely and I walked into my empty apartment and I thought god I wish that I had someone who could just hold me right now like I wish that I had someone who could just take care of me because I have to take care of myself every single day and it's fucking exhausting and I just want someone to take care of me every now and then the modern woman got tired of saying she doesn't need any man. The problem lies in the fact that it's easy to say this in your 20s when your social value and youth are at their peak, but by your mid-30s or 40s, you realize hitting the wall is a harsh reality. Being empowered without a family or children, being alone in the world, is tough. Right now, we see women who hit the wall. They're in their 50s, waking up to this deception, realizing they were lied to. Being without a man isn't as glamorous as it's made out to be. They find themselves in an empty house, with no one waiting for them, realizing a cat isn't a child. Many of these women don't even have friends because, believe me, the competition among women is worse than among men. This leads women to have to protect their husbands even from their own friends, causing many women to distance themselves from their friends when they find partners, leaving them even more isolated. That's why they're the number one consumers of antidepressants because loneliness only leads them to a dark and sad place. I can't talk right now. I'm doing lonely girls. Maluma, Maluma, Zaka Prescott, BDO Tacos, more money, a car that doesn't make noise. No, not to, not to the millionaires. You get that thing away from me right now. They're nice. They're not, I don't care. I don't care if they're flipping nice. That guy looks like him and Bennett. This is my outfit for today. And if you don't like it, you could leave. Okay. I don't know if anybody can relate to this, oh, but so that feeling when you feel like you're alone and it can't get any lonelier than this, bro. I mean, a man can, but it looks like you want people to take you seriously and to feel sorry for you and have some sympathy and empathy for you when you feel this way. But should a man say, man, it's really lonely out here. We really want some friends. <gasps> You need to fix yourself. That's your fault. You don't need to be playing victim. You're lonely and you're single because you've been out here acting silly and crazy with women. You don't have any social skills and you stink. That's what they be saying to men. They be acting like men are the scum of the earth. They don't be taking care of themselves and they don't be doing the things that they need to do. Huh? But now when you're having issues, then you want people to pay attention to you. Women constantly put their faith in all the nonsense they see on the internet, hoping to find a man. Why do you think there are so many dating coaches giving advice and selling courses on how to snag your provider or high-value man? Look at this woman manifesting her man. She probably ordered him off Amazon. What women should do is lower their standards. Look at how the other one is trying to hook her up with a friend of a friend. This used to be well-received when your friend's wife wanted to introduce you to a friend, but nowadays, where many men don't have friends or women don't have friends. The women who do have friends get involved with men without friendships. This leads women not to want their friend to get close to their husband, and rightly so, because another woman is a woman's worst enemy. But it's tough. That's why the girl in the car is crying, because many are alone in the world. Brothers making their lives, parents have passed away, and you hit the wall without a child or husband. So, it's tremendous loneliness because if you disappear tomorrow, no one would notice. Brothers, being a man at this moment is an advantage because even though feminists say they want to be strong and independent, loneliness is causing young and older women to rethink things. 
Now they realize it's better to be with your man. Let's talk about what most high value men look for in a wife. I have only dated very successful men or men who are about to be very successful. If we're not counting high school, okay, high school, it was dusties. It was just dusties. <laughs> Basically, the main thing that high value men are looking for is somebody to make their life happier outside of the workplace. These men need somebody to increase the value in their emotional life and their fulfillment in life. As a woman, your emotional intelligence is one of your biggest assets to men in their eyes. Are you able to calm them down before a business meeting? Are you able to make them happier when they're stressed out? The second thing is they love a woman that has healthy habits that will naturally make them have healthy habits as well. If you love to work out, you don't party all the time, you like to eat good. They also like when you add value in experiences. So you might not be paying for anything but having good ideas of things that you guys should do restaurants you should go to trips that you can go on maybe you help plan things that's very valuable in a man's eyes because you are again increasing the quality of his life and the experiences i kid you not i explained everything that i just said in my bumble profile when i was single and every single man that i had matched with was making at least 30 million plus a year like i have a background in marketing so this is basically just all target audience and i just portrayed the target audience very well in the profile and if somebody ever asks you what do you bring to the table you watch this video and save it and tell them that in short this woman was one of those who dated wealthy men hey what amount of money is she talking about? She's the one who claims to date the richest men, saying they only went out with her for her looks and experience. Brothers, we all know that in this life, everything has a cost. It's true that the modern and attractive woman doesn't have to work to be able to board a yacht or be taken on trips. But you and I are clear that on those trips, they make her do many yoga poses. After getting tired of having fun with rich men, now she marries a poor man or a beta provider. How ironic, right? She enjoys herself with the Chad, then marries the beta provider. <laughs> this is what happens to many women. They reject good men, then find themselves at 35 hitting the wall, having to change and seek their beta provider because now they're ready to be a wife. They don't see it as they said, I have my house, I cook well, I want a husband and children. Now, at 37 years old, after having fun, they want a serious man. Alright, so I got off work early and hauled tail to the lease, aka the hog plantation, because this place is eat up and overrun by daggum hogs. I'm talking some units. So I'm gonna see if I can't stick one of them, put it. I've been reading Bell Hooks because she's the best and I'm on my healing journey, but something that she wrote that I literally, after I read it, I had to put it down and uh, stare at a wall for about 20 minutes was she said that to really be a non-patriarchal woman who wants to be in relationships with men is the acceptance of being alone for potentially very long periods of your life and that shit me like a ton of bricks because it was like confirmation of everything i've always been afraid of but it's um what's well, true Many feminists instill this idea in women that men oppress them, that men want to make them suffer, that they only want to have power over them, which leads many women to want to go against the system. The problem is they're not going against men, they're going against their own biology as women. They decide to work like men, pursue a career, enter corporate life, become the big female boss. But then they realize that several years have passed and no man is interested in them, and the men who are interested don't want them because they're not at their level. That's why that book tells them to prepare for long years of loneliness. It should say, instead, this path leads you to hit the wall. As we all know, the wall doesn't forgive. That's why we now see many women trying to get men's attention by posting those videos on TikTok so that simps will tell them, you're beautiful, I'd die to be with you. Most of these women had good suitors, but like the feminists, the big corporations, the dating coaches tell them, don't settle for less than you deserve. Like all of them think they're a perfect 10, they only want a rich, high-value man. Which is only 15% of men. They all believe they deserve one, rejecting the average man. That's how they end up alone in the end. Now, at 35 or older, they feel the weight of their decision.
And that shit me like a ton of bricks because it was like confirmation of everything I've always been afraid of. In the video that I stitched, this woman is saying that when she was reading Bell Hooks, she got to a part in the book where Bell Hooks says that in order to be a non-patriarchal woman, you need to be okay with being alone for long periods of time in your life. Now, this is a really hard pill to swallow, especially if it is your first time thinking about the possibility of ending up alone or just having your life not match the timeline expectations you have. But within that same chapter, Bell Hooks talks about the importance of knowing what to look for in a man. And I feel like a lot of the times, we ourselves can feel like we are very powerless to the situation because at the end of the day, feminism is something that is more widely known to be a benefit to women, even though it is an equal benefit to men as well. But what has helped me in feeling like I have more agency over my love life is realizing that I have the power to choose and reading these types of books prepares me to know what to look for. I guess feminism would be a benefit to men because men have the ability or they are forced to develop the ability to adapt. And so when you say, say for instance, we're not gonna be working in the house so much anymore. We're gonna go outside the home and we're going to work. A man would, because he's the protector and provider, he would have to adapt to that. Think about if you're hunting and you get used to a certain way of life and things that happen, then as the hunter, if it changes, if you wanna eat, then you have to adapt to that. And now when you come up with initiatives like Me Too, Believe All Women, uh, what was that, feminism and things of that nature, then men would have to adapt to that. Me Too, Believe All Women. Okay, well, if you're going to do that, I'll just back off and you can come approach me. You want to be a woman now? No, I want to stay out of jail. I want to stay out of prison. I want to stay out of trouble. I want to make sure you feel safe and comfortable. Not even joking. I want to make sure that you feel like you have control and that you're empowered in the situation. Well, I don't want to be empowered like that. You can approach me. Stop being dunce. <laughs> what, do you want me, what do you want me to do? You're upset that men adapt to the situation and the times and they plan and act accordingly. But then when you're saying that men don't communicate, they don't communicate with you. They don't approach you. They don't do all of these things. Now it's not a benefit to you. And now you see as a leader how terrible your decisions are. And now you see why in general men are leading. It's not because you're incompetent. It's because you're not a good leader in the first place. So why would somebody give you a leadership position and you're not good for it? It would be the same thing for a man, anybody that's president. Why would we give this man leadership and he's incompetent? It's, it's except, except that when it's a man, he's going to get shredded by men and women probably mostly by men bro get out and 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 he's going to get thrown out of there we're not going to take this bro you don't know what you're doing get the heck out of here that's what men are going to do but with women in modern day we have to leave you up there and your incompetence knowing that you don't know what you're doing and let you figure it out and try to support you the best that we can and then when we decide we can't take anymore and we move somewhere else or we get mad and say man it's not working and we're not we're not going to continue. Oh, you hate women. And no, it's just that you don't know what you're doing. How we know we don't have to guess. We can listen to you talk. And when you talk about this is how I know how to how to screen men because of reading this book. Now we know that you don't know how to make proper decisions because that book was silly. That book was telling you stuff that you actually didn't need to know. And it was dumb because of women like this. Many end up alone. What can you expect from a woman who is lonelier than the sun at noon? These women spread their misery with their anti-men message. They don't see how many, after hitting the wall hard, say, men don't like me. But it's not that men don't like women, it's that at 35, they want to take on the role of a wife or a homemaker because in their youth, like this feminist, they go around with the mindset of not needing any man. The other problem is that many of these women didn't have father figures. Many come from single mother households or disastrous divorces. What happens with this is that these women grow up without any respect for their man. That's why when they have a man, they take him for granted, treat him badly, don't take care of him, only care about the financial aspect. I'm generalizing because there are many good women, but we're talking about a trend of loneliness. When a man in a household doesn't feel respected and cared for, he leaves that woman for another who does. Another thing, when a man leaves a woman for a younger one, there are always factors involved, the most important being children. 
A woman at an older age often struggles to give you healthy children, which is the dream of almost 80% of men, the heir. When a woman at the wall can't give you that, you see a young woman who can provide you with what you desire so much. What do you think the man will do? Women who hear this, play your cards in time, bid on a man's potential. Find your husband when you're young, don't wait to hit the wall, because by 2045, 50% of women will be single and childless.